Well, hello, everyone. And uh, we are here today uh, to talk about the bachelor's program uh, here during this online open day. And uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Patrice Sargenti, who is the program director. We also have with us Marine Giannini from the Career Services, who talk about the, the internships, the network, and uh, everything about uh, career. And we have our special guest, Alain, who is a student here at IUM for the Bachelor and also the president of the Student Association. So hello, everyone. And thank you for, for being with us today. So I will leave now the floor to Dr. Sargenti. And just before that, I would like to, to tell you that if you have a question, you can use the Q&A button or the chat, and uh, we will ask live your, your questions. So don't hesitate. Thank you, and have a nice session. Patrice, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Patrice. I'm in charge of the bachelor program here at the International University of Monaco. Let me just uh, welcome you uh, very uh, kindly. Uh, we have today a little agenda, to be honest. Uh, we are going to discuss a bit about the institution in general. Uh, and then slowly but surely, we are going to go deep into uh, its programs and the bachelor program uh, directly. Uh, we always start the presentation by, uh, you know, showing you the mission statement. I won't go through uh, the entire mission statement, but I am going to explain you a few things uh, because it clearly uh, describes what we are um, going through a uh, few keywords. First of all, uh, the International University of Monaco aims to educate. Uh, that means that the purpose number one of the University of Monaco is to teach and to develop students' skills. There are two different in institutions in general in uh, higher education. We have the research uh, institutions and the educational institutions. So we are here you know, to teach mainly. Um, the second very important uh, keyword here is to develop uh, responsible business leaders of tomorrow. Uh, responsible is very important as well. Uh, we, are, uh, we have values. Uh, we are speaking about ethics, corporate sustainability, corporate social responsibility. So these are core values that will be, you know, instilled in every classes throughout the classes in order to, you know, develop some particular way of doing business in the future because we are completely convinced and the principality as well, that uh, these core values, you know, are unavoidable for the future. Uh, we are speaking about people coming from all over the world. Of course, um, we are very, very international at the University of Monaco, as you will see uh, soon in the next slides. Uh, we are very small as well, but that is very stimulating for the students. And we have, this entrepreneurial spirit, experiential learning, a lot of projects throughout the curriculum that uh, students are doing for real, in the real life, for real people, that uh, makes you know, the experience a bit different uh, at the International University of Monaco. We are part of a group called INSECU, which is a French institution. And of course, we are as well clearly involved in the dynamism of the Principality of Monaco with, uh, you know, it's 5,000 companies in two square kilometers. This is amazing. Uh, on top of what everybody else, you know, knows from the Principality of Monaco uh, and uh, what you can see on, on the media in general, but it's a real business hub and uh, it's clearly uh, part of uh, students' interaction. All these companies are working with us. In little, uh, little figures about the University of Monaco. First of all, we were created in 1986. So we are a very, very young university. Um, our program portfolio ranges from the bachelor to the doctorate with specialized master and a master of business administration. The student population is small, 650 people here. 50% are women. And uh, the specificity is that we have more than 80 nationalities in the University of Monaco uh, throughout the 650 students. This is very uh, deep in terms of multiculturality. 50% um, of, the, of the students 
are, are women. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the topology of the student population matches clearly uh, the, the, the specificity of the principality. Uh, there is more than 100 uh, nationality in Monaco on, with only two square kilometers. It's a very small, tiny village, uh, but very, very international and very, very active. Our alumni population is 3,300, so uh, it's not huge, but again, here, they are all over the world, um, more than 100 countries, in fact. So, uh, and since we are small, we are very connected to the students and to the alumni, that makes a special relationship between us and the alumni population. Our faculty is composed of uh, two types of professors. First of all, we have our full-time faculty. These are full-time professors here four days a week with an open door policy. They are researchers, you know, teaching more uh, fundamental, more theoretical uh, knowledge. Uh, and then we have uh, more than 100 adjunct faculty. Uh, they are practitioners more. They are teaching, you know, normal academic class, but through a, a window uh, which is a bit more professional, giving you perspectives, uh, real work for real people in, in the work and, and perspective from the business world. It's a good balance. At the bachelor level, uh, you should be exposed to one third of your classes uh, to researcher and two thirds of your classes uh, with practitioners. We are accredited by uh, the uh, association of AMBA uh, and uh, we are, of course, part of this, uh, this huge uh, group, which is a French group called InsecU. We have a new facility since one year now, so we are located uh, in the center town of Monaco. Even if it is a small town, there is a center town. Uh, so, um, and it's uh, close to the railway station. So students that are coming through uh, the train can, can, can walk uh, in five minutes uh, in, in classroom after the trains arrive. So that's good. Uh, so the facilities, as everything in Monaco, we are not huge. It's 2,000 square kilometers, 15 classrooms. We have a, around 550 seats in classrooms. But it's, uh, it's quite nice. You can see some pictures here about the University uh, of Monaco. And we have Alain here. Uh, what do you think about the facilities of uh, the University, Alain? Yeah, great. Well, luckily, uh, I joined as a student when just the new building opened. So all of the facilities are brand new and uh, I quite like it. It's um, like a bit of a small school, but you still have like enough space, like considering how many students there are, it's um, you have enough space. If you want to work somewhere, there's always space for you to go. There's a cafeteria, Gianni's, where you can get the most excellent coffees and excellent uh, sandwiches. There's a library always available with uh, resources. Um, the classrooms and as you can see carpet as well which i always uh, like uh, <laughs> so i think yeah facilities for a student uh, all you need and fast wi-fi especially in today's uh, world it's a necessity thank you very much uh, so something very important to say is that uh, uh, students this year had the opportunity to use the facilities because uh, we did not close. In fact, uh, there was no uh, lockdown in Monaco in the fall term. So we had classes in class, in fact, with, of course, a special, uh, you know, framework. But, uh, you know, students were here physically in class and we were all very happy, uh, both students and faculty, right? Yeah, super happy. Considering that, like, basically in all of Europe, uh, France, etc., the universities are closed and students cannot come to class. It feels like a true luxury to be able to still uh, meet your professors in real life and go to class. So we're very happy about that. Right, right. So to, so this is a little uh, diagram that shows the, the, the five pillars of our, our educational philosophy. First of all, and you already understood that a bit, uh, we have a good balance between theoretical approach and very practical approach with all, a lot of project uh, for real professors, uh, for real practitioners, real company, you know, asking students to do real, uh, real work, uh, you know, for the real world. And that, that makes the students in, in another settlement. And that's uh, very important for us to have them interacting with the, with the, the reality of the world. Uh, there is another concept which is important for us it's this collaborative and cooperative learning. Um, we, we start from uh, the idea of you, you won't be able to work uh, you know, alone in your life. Uh, it will be in team and uh, you know, uh, the team makes the strength. 
uh, today, students uh, have strengths and weaknesses. Of course, the idea is that all together, helping each other, uh, students can reach to the end, you know, in the right way. Uh, we have this tutoring in place uh, with uh, second year and third year students that are helping, uh, you know, students that are needing a bit of, of support. Uh, Alain, maybe you can mention that a bit uh, about what you are doing in the tutoring in general. Yes, yeah, so the student, like, there's quite um, a supportive community of uh, students and some students are really good at, for example, economics and other students are, for example, really good at marketing and they like to work together, the students in groups to help and support each other and to make sure that they um, receive the help uh, that they need. So they support each other. In yeah, exactly. So, so we open classroom in the evening with, uh, you know, uh, students that need a bit of support. Uh, the other students are here to help them, you know, explain them. Uh, maybe, you know, a repetition from the student's per perspective uh, makes it clearer for, uh, for first year students, maybe to understand the way we do and, and what are the expectations in fact of the professors. Uh, so the and other so, pillar um, is the, sorry, Alain, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, and also that there are quite a lot of um, presentations and group assignments that the professors do. So often you're in a group and the, in the groups, they support each other to make sure that um, for the best results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the, the third pillar is the multicultural learning. Uh, this is natural for us, but in fact, when we benchmark a bit and we speak with people from elsewhere, it's unique, in fact. Um, these 80 nationalities, you know, making up the student population, when we are in class, you know, students are learning from each other more even than uh, from the professor directly in terms of cross-cultural management. And in class, you know, we are following American uh, pedagogy with a flipped class, uh, a lot of discussion in class. Uh, in fact, students, you know, by, by um, sharing their own perspective from their own origin, um, makes this multicultural learning, uh, you know, alive uh, naturally. Uh, but it is important to mention it because it's, it's, it's completely unique, in fact. Uh, and uh, when in a normal classroom, you have 25 students or maybe 35 students, but 15 or 20 different nationalities, um, and we speak about sustainability or we speak about business ethics, th their own, you know, uh, perspective are not the same at all, in fact. And it's important to share, you know, each other uh, opinion uh, to, to understand and to be a bit more ready uh, when in your future you will develop an international career because the International University of Monaco is here to, you know, to open a global uh, career for you. Uh, so it's international in the facilities and normally it will be international for you for the next step uh, after the studies. Next one is active learning. This is something we, 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 we would like really uh, to, to emphasize in the studies. We, we speak about entrepreneurship spirit, uh, be proactive in your studies, you know, be your own actor of uh, what you want to do during your studies. Uh, we have a lot of examples of uh, active learning. Uh, the one I usually mention is, uh, you know, try to use the open door policy, the fact that uh, we are available all the time to anticipate problems. That's the number one. But this entrepreneurial spirit is there as well. Alain is part of the student association, is a super active member. Uh, you can maybe explain what you did and what all, what are all the actions that uh, you put in place throughout, you know, these two years you are with us. Uh, thanks to the association, you, you, you helped developing. Go ahead. Yeah. Exactly. So for this year, of course, it was a little bit difficult with the um, COVID situation. However, luckily, we still managed to pull off uh, quite a few uh, activities. For example, when all the new students came in September, we organized a uh, welcome back live stream party. So all of the students who couldn't come travel to IUM and had to do it online, we still gave uh, a nice uh, welcome back party and we all connected online. Um, another uh, event that we did, for example, we had a uh, Monaco karting event. So we have a karting place uh, in, Mon in Monaco and um, we had quite a few students there where they did some competitions and everything within the Corona guidelines, uh, of course, but still by respecting that, we still managed uh, to do that. We had health workshops. So of course, it's quite difficult in these times and with the workload and pressure. So we had a um, psychotherapists come in and give sessions about mental uh, well-being and about burnout and like personal hygiene to do that. Um, 
we have different clubs and societies as well. So we have the chess club, for people who are interested in chess. We have the IUM Motor Club, which is um, part of um, the luxury uh, side. And of course, Monaco is um, a hub known for uh, with many cool cars. And so the Student Association created this society where all the car lovers, car admirers could come together and um, enjoy that. Um, we have the Finance Society and the Finance Society, uh, same. Um, they have quizzes and a community together. And they recently also organized a, a trading simulation competition. So you could um, trade in the simulation and some of the winners, the winning members of this competition were invited to go to London and follow a extensive uh, masterclass in that. And we have many more. I can keep talking forever, but we have uh, like a tennis club, we have a football club, we got a sailing club, karting club, golf club, we got a business program going on. So, um, yeah. A lot of activities, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things, to be honest. And keep going. And, you know? and, and this is what we call active learning. You know, you know if you want something to, to happen, uh, it's clearly, you know, make it happen. Uh, we are small, we are flexible, we are open to proposal, and we are, you know, foster to develop, you know, this entrepreneurial spirit. It's not only creating your own company, even if students are already, you know, uh, you know, creating their own company during their studies and all that. But, you know, make, be, be an actor, you know, that's the idea. And all that in the framework of a very small university with a small population uh, where we can, you know, know you. And uh, you can discuss, you can meet with us. And uh, we have this individualized attention uh, that, uh, you know, uh, are, are part of our DNA, uh, really, to make a special, you know, community here and, and a special, you know, sense of interaction between students and, and the institutions in general. And Patrice, sorry to interrupt, but we have a question from Marius who wants to, to know uh, what are the advantages of IOM in comparison to the, the UK university? Can you repeat, please? I did not get it, sorry. Sorry, what are the advantages of IOM compared to a uh, UK university? So first of all, they are not in Monaco, okay? So this is, uh, you know, a very, very uh, big advantage. Uh, the other one is that uh, we are small and we are in, in, a, in a special village. So if, if we compare to a UK university, it's far less theoretical, more applied and more connected to business. Uh, you know, direct connection to business. They are, you know, next doors. They, the, the CEO comes, they, they share with the students. You can interact with them. Uh, so that, that makes something very different than being in a 20,000 uh, student population, you know, uh, the drawback could be that you cannot hide, mm, of course, uh, but uh, it's, it's, to be honest, it's, it's a good advantage, in fact, uh, to be, uh, you know, in a small community. Is that uh, okay for the answer? Yes, thank you. <laughs> so the experiential education that you see in this diagram is very important. It's a motto throughout the studies. Uh, we have projects, we have charity, we have uh, not only in-class project, but we have competition outside class. I'm going to show you a few. All the students are involved. We are involving as well students from other community, other universities, you will see. So this experience, you know, not mentioning the internships, but uh, of course we have a lot of internships available, but uh, this makes your studies, you know, with a real hands-on experience. And it's important, you know, for your employability afterwards, uh, because the employer, we will maybe would like to know what you did in the math class, but uh, I am more, you know, convinced that they will ask you uh, what you did. In fact, uh, you know, as a real example, you know, to sell yourself when you will go to, uh, to seek for a job. Uh, so now we are going to go through the programs of IOM and the bachelor in particular, if, if we don't have additional questions. Okay, so, uh, so the programs at the International University ranges from the bachelor to the doctorate. In the bachelor program, it's called the Bachelor of Business Administration. At the end of the third year, uh, during the third year, you can choose a specialization, which is either global business management, communication and event management. We have luxury, uh, which is part of our you know, specific field, sport management and international finance. So 
During these first three years, you will have a global perspective of business administration in general, and you know throughout your internship, and you will be able to choose your specialization for the third year, and then choose accordingly the master that corresponds to you. Uh, luxury management with three specialties we have here, marketing, finance, sport management or international management. Of course, we have the MBA program, but usually the MBA program is not open to, uh, you know, bachelor students because they are, uh, you know, reserved for people that have already three to five years of professional experiences. So normally after the bachelor, you continue directly with specialized master and the MBA can come later. And finally, uh, you have the doctorate because uh, we are operating the DBA, Doctorate of Business Administration, which is a bit more applied than a normal PhD, uh, concrete. Uh, and usually it's uh, professional people that are working, that are following this uh, DBA, which is mainly online with some residential weeks. And they are going you know, deep into a particular subject linked to their you know, field of activity they are doing, in fact. Uh, in terms of recognition and accreditation, so we are accredited by AMBA, uh, which is uh, for the MBA program since 2005. Uh, last renewal was uh, this year. In fact, uh, I did not change the slide, sorry, but we just we just been renewed. Um, we have ACSB uh, accreditation, which is normally coming uh, in the next few weeks. We had the final audit uh, two months ago now. So normally we should have an answer soon. So normally we will be ACSB accredited as well. And we have as well a third recognition, which is um, the Monaco state, the visa from the government. So our, all our diplomas are uh, recognized and signed by uh, the Ministry of Education here in Monaco that uh, gives the recognition of the diploma all over the world, as far as uh, Monaco is recognized as a real country, which is the case uh, everywhere. So normally the, the diploma are recognized in all the countries. So these are our free recognition in terms of uh, um, ranking to give you an idea about uh, you know, the league we are working in. Uh, we are um, ranked in the top 100 MBA in the world. We are ranked 71 in the economist ranking. So uh, there is more than 5,000 uh, MBA in the world uh, and we are in the top 100. To be honest, uh, it's a very good achievement for a young and small university as we are. And uh, not only we are in the top 100, but even if we are 71, we are not in the top 10. But uh, to be honest, uh, good names are in front of us, but some of the good names are behind us as well. Uh, so we are quite proud of uh, these achievements and it is going to increase and to improve uh, you know, every year. Uh, the program bachelor more in detail. Uh, so we have uh, uh, two uh, possibilities for the program bachelor. Uh, we have uh, the three year degree that uh, is delivered in three years. Students will end up with an IT US credit transcript, uh, which is the equivalent of a 180 ECTS. In fact, uh, Monaco um, cannot deliver the CTS credit yet, so we have a uh, US credit, uh, which is uh, working. Yeah? And of course, we give the equivalent um, of uh, ECTS uh, for the, you know, for the students that want to continue their studies in France or elsewhere in the world. It works, of course. No problem. Uh, we have as well another option, which is called the honors track here. Uh, it's a four year degree bachelor program, uh, which is the equivalent of uh, the bachelor in the United States. Um, they do it in four years. They ended up with 120 US credits. Here, it's more or less the same. You have 120 US credits, but you, you do the, the, this total amount of credits in three years here. Uh, so, in fact, it's an option that students can activate after the first term. And, um, of course, to be eligible, you need to be a very good student because it adds additional classes to the current curriculum. And you ended up in the same three year with one more year degree, a four year degree. So it's a, it's a good opportunity for the students that seek to go to a master in the U.S. So they will save one year. And in the US, one year is 50,000 US dollars. Uh, so this is uh, you know, important. Uh, and on top of it, if you want to you know, go further or if you seek uh, for uh, maybe um, going to work directly after your studies, uh, it may be better to secure a four year degree uh, than a three year to go on the market uh, directly with the possibility of uh, seeking for white collar position later on. 
The first year of studies is in Monaco. Uh, two, uh, two intakes, you can start your studies in uh, fall, in September, or in spring, in January, but you stay in Monaco for one academic year, okay? Uh, the second year, you have one term abroad and one term in Monaco. So abroad means an exchange, uh, so uh, an academic term in one of our partner universities uh, around the world, of course. We have the list I'm going to show you later on. And then you have one term here in Monaco. And the third year is organized around a first term in Monaco with your specialization classes and one term as an internship, you know, up to six months internship to finish your bachelor studies, you know, with a hands-on uh, experience. So that's why. I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, is it possible to come to IUM to do the bachelor during the second year? A transfer student, yes, of course, yes, there is a possibility exactly. to transfer. So the, the, the normal transfer uh, study students are uh, students that have an associate degree. Uh, so after two years of studies, uh, you have uh, an associate degree from uh, America, for example, or in French, you have uh, in France, you have it, uh, EUT or BTS, so a two year degree. Then you can join us on the third year directly. Uh, of course, it needs to be a business related fields that you studied in your first two years. Uh, there is another possibility to transfer, which is a bit more uh, technical and precise. Um, if you studied one year, for example, in one uh, of, uh, you know, a university in Paris, for example, or in London, and finally you decided that uh, you would like to move uh, for your second year to IUM, we have to go through uh, your transcript to look at the classes you validated during your first year. And uh, if it matches up to 80% our curriculum with the, the main classes, the important ones that are taught in first year here, covered in your London University with a passing grade, of course, then we can transfer, you know, the equivalent of one semester or two semester, uh, up to three uh, maximum, it's the maximum uh, semester, if you really have the, the matching uh, topics, in fact, uh, but uh, you need to have a passing grade uh, above average, uh, and uh, of course it needs to match. Uh, to be clear, but maybe after I have the classes, so I'm, I'm going to show you the classes we do in the first year. So it is obvious that if you did not do any marketing or uh, you know accounting uh, or economy, uh, these are the fundamental topics that uh, we are covering during the first year that cannot be avoidable. So you, you won't be able to join the second year if you don't have one of those, you know, fundamental classes that uh, are used, you know, to build up the rest of the knowledge after, you know, during your second and third. Okay, so we, we, we you will see clearly uh, that uh, in red, when, when you start your studies, you have to choose during the application if you want to do the business management or the marketing and communication track. Um, then we have 50% of all the classes that are in common with the tracks. And during the third year, you choose one of the specialization we already mentioned. In this list, you see an additional bullet points, the last line. It is called the Monaco Banking and Financial Services. Uh, this is the third year of the bachelor program that uh, we are operating in another way. Uh, students with an associate degree, transfer students or students from IUM can choose to go for this third year, Monaco Banking and Financial Services, if they want. It's an apprenticeship program. So in fact, during this year, you will work you know, in a bank in Monaco for one year, three days a week in the bank. And normally you are here Thursday and Friday to study uh, academic uh, content. And then you finish with the BBA, eh, the bachelor program, of course, but uh, you have one year of professional experience. Of course, this is meant to um, uh, and built for students that would like to develop a career in the banks in general, whether it's private banking and retail banking. You know, in Monaco, there are, you know, around 80 financial institutions. So there is a lot of opportunities and uh, in different sectors of banking in finance in, uh, in general. Uh, for as an example, I put some uh, screenshot about the, um, the layout of the, of the program. So this is the first semester. Uh, first semester and all the semesters are constructed in the same way. You have a core module, normally the first one is what we call the business, uh, the, the, the business, 
sorry, uh, it's called um, functional business uh, knowledge. So it's more technical class, uh, academic class, but linked to, you know, uh, functional business knowledge. Um, you have always, you know, another module, which is called transversal skills. And then you have the classes corresponding to the track you selected during the application. So basically you have, you can see uh, from uh, eight to nine classes, if you take the second language, which is optional um, during your, your studies, um, which is the equivalent of 20, 25 hours of class per week. Uh, the classes uh, starts, you know, at the beginning of the semester and ends at the end of the semester. So the, the semester, the following semester, you have new classes. Uh, so subjects are changing every, every term, in fact. So the second term is more around management. Uh, we have still a, business, a functional business knowledge module with managing people and resources. We have as well uh, these soft skills. Uh, and this is where we are going to start uh, speaking about uh, your CV, uh, seeking for a job, uh, cover letter, having interviews and things like that. How to you know, position yourself in the job market uh, in order to start you know, working on the, on the CV and uh, seeking for uh, internships, for example. Uh, and we have the business uh, and the marketing tracks according to the, 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 mod the track you choose. Here you can see that we have this honors track. So these are additional classes that you will have if you choose the honors track after the first term. Okay, I go fast throughout the classes. I won't list all the details of all the classes. Of course, if you need more information, do not hesitate. You know, you revert to us and then we are going to, you know, make a private session to discuss. And I, then I can go deep into each class to explain you what we do. Uh, the second year, there is one term at IOM. So these are the classes that are taught here at IOM. Uh, same same model with uh, this business evolution and revolution uh, module about the economy of tomorrow, disruptive economy. We have these soft skills uh, and then uh, the, the honors track, of course. The second term during the second year you go abroad. So that the idea is to choose one of the institution that we have, partner institutions. This list is going to increase drastically, rapidly, because once we will have the ACSB accreditation, we will be able to partner with ACS, ACSB accredited universities. So we have already a lot of demands, but uh, slowly, one step after the other. And uh, so you can go to London, you can go to Paris. These are our campus uh, from the INSEC group, but we have universities in America, in Canada as well. But in Europe, of course, we have, and we have as well uh, quite a lot in Asia, which are uh, good. Uh, some names that uh, I don't know if you know, but um, Tonji uh, in, uh, in, in China is very good. And in, um, in Japan as well, the one we have is a very, very good one in UCB. We have uh, the Korea, the Sing Kung Kun, Kun Kwan, sorry. <laughs> so in Korea, it's very good as well. In Russia, we have two partners. So uh, you may be interested in having one term in Moscow, for example. Interesting, Ranepa and uh, Mgimo. These are two big, big, big names in, in Russia, in fact, uh, where you can, uh, you know, spend one term, you know, studying and experiencing. You know, the idea of this exchange term is to, you know, develop, you know, your uh, awareness of uh, cultural diversity and how things are operating elsewhere. Very important. During the last year, you have one term here uh, with uh, the core module uh, strategy and global development and the specialization you choose. Uh, we have the honors track, of course. You finish with a big capstone project when you are in the honors track. You can do, you know, a research thesis. You can do um, a, an entrepreneurial project as well or a big communication plan according to the track you choose. Uh, so this is a big, big work that you do throughout the entire year with one professor, one advisor. So one student, one professor, regular meeting, you end up with a defense. Um, it's a big job, uh, big, big project. Uh, very interesting. That leads to, uh, you know, being a bit specialized in something and that opens doors uh, afterwards. So this is uh, what I had to say for the, for, for the program itself. If there is question, no problem. Now or after, no problem. I will yes. give back the floor. Yes, there is just one question. Is it possible uh, to choose languages? How many languages and which ones? Okay, so uh, we have uh, this option to start a new language. Uh, you know, when you arrive at IOM, 
Um, we have five languages uh, proposed. Uh, we have uh, Italian Spanish, which is the standard, uh, historical standard. We have Russian and Chinese. And uh, in fact, we have French. Uh, because, uh, you know, students uh, does not speak French <laughs> when they come here, usually for a big majority, yeah, the, 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 the population uh, of non-French speaking people is more than 70% here. Uh, we have 20% uh, of French, uh, then we have Italians, 15%, and then uh, no dominating nationalities, the others uh, no, are less than 15%. So we call them French survival a bit, uh, so you can start French and it's the, the language which is, uh, you know, asked the most. Uh, but uh, Russian, Chinese, Italian and Spanish are available. Okay, thank you. And I have a question for Alain. Maybe you, you can ask. So we have Marius who wants to know if it's easy to adapt uh, if you don't speak French at all uh, here in Monaco. Okay, so of course the official language here in uh, Monaco is French, but because it's so international, everyone speaks uh, English. So if, you, if you're out in public and you want to go to a restaurant uh, or you get stopped by the police, uh, God forbid, but, uh, or anything, you can always find your way in, um, in English. However, there's also a lot of French speaking. And if you speak French, generally people prefer to speak French just because of the beauty of the language. But if you don't speak any French, then you can easily find your way uh, in English. Also, all the classes, they're in English. Um, however, I do. there is like a big social uh, population at IUM that do speak French. And um, so it's good to learn to uh, think, but they also speak English. So uh, don't worry, it's fine, <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, okay. so the French uh, so surviving is if you live in Nice, for example, or a bit further than Monaco, or you know, it's a very close surrounding, uh, then uh, you will you will meet real French people. So uh, and and this one, you know, they are they are they are speaking French. <laughs> so if you want to get a bread, uh, you know, in one of the village above Nice, uh, it's it's better than uh, you, <laughs> you know how to ask for for a, a bread <laughs> in in French. But this is easy. yeah. The basics. Sure, yeah. So I like speaking, like learning some basics of French will really, really yeah. help you. And uh, also it's also quite appreciate, uh, appreciated by the French speaking community to learn the basics or at least. Uh, yeah, but yeah. it's not compulsory. Uh, definitely not. No, not compulsory. No. Thank you. You're welcome. So now I, I will give the floor to Marine. Uh, Marine, uh, welcome. Marine is in charge of uh, working with the career services. Uh, she's in charge of the internship. She's in charge of the alumni population. So she has a lot of things to say to you. So Marine, welcome. Thank you, Patrice. So hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, my role quickly at IUM is to be the bridge between companies and students and make sure that everybody gets in touch that students find a good internship for their CVs and that companies find their perfect intern, which may be you someday. So just to give you an overview and an idea of what are the things that we provide in terms of services to help you find an internship or find a job, because that will be ultimately your goal at the end of the day, okay? So we have different types of services depending on the programs that you attend. I'll explain specifically bachelor and then master so that you see the difference uh, that there will be. So for the whole school, bachelor, master, MBA, DBA, and alumni, we send out once a week a job listing, which is made of all the internship and job offers that we receive from the companies, as well from the ones that we screen on the web. And that is sent weekly, okay? Every Friday, my students receive uh, this listing. They're free to apply to any of these offers that they might be interested in. We also provide screening uh, of talent for companies. Some companies who do not wish to do the first round of screening, they have a specific profile in mind. The beauty of being a small university is that we're in close, close contact with our students. We know them well, we know their profiles, and we know what they look like. And I usually, most of the time, know my students by their first name. So I know your CV, what you've done before, and I am able to screen for companies as well when they're looking for specific profiles um, to integrate in their companies. So on top of that, I do individual career counseling session with my students when they request individual meetings, either physically at IUM or online through Teams, Zoom, uh, Skype, 
whatever it is, you name it, uh, we, we do it. <laughs> and um, so that's something that we've kept going even during the pandemic. So it's been going on ever since. We review CV, cover letter, LinkedIn, uh, internship search strategy, for example, or any doubts really that you may have regarding your career. Does it make sense for me to do a master degree after my bachelor? Should I go and work? This is the type of discussions as well that I have with my students. We go in class usually during uh, the second year to give uh, um, a seminar on CV and cover letter specifically. We help you define your career goal setting and objectives, okay? Because the idea is that any uh, experience that will go on your CV will need to be in line with your professional objectives. It needs to make sense for your future career plan. Um, we help you define also your self-selling techniques. So working on an elevator pitch, know how to sell yourself as a product, but to a company. You'll have three internship opportunities throughout uh, your bachelor degree, um, two optional, one compulsory, except if you're doing the honor track, you'll have one optional and two compulsory. Um, the compulsory one being usually the last semester of your last year, which gives you the opportunity uh, to, to gain, uh, to apply all the knowledge that you've uh, uh, acquired during these three years and specifically to the industry that you're interested in uh, with the specialization that you will choose in the fall of your third year. Um, we organize every year the International Business Days. It's a three days event. I have a uh, slide uh, next, uh, so I'm not gonna talk about it right now fully in detail. We organize two business plan competitions every year, uh, one being uh, the Mark Challenge, so it's very luxury oriented, luxury services. The other one being the Monaco Ocean Protection Challenge, which is uh, uh, something that we co-organize with the Museo Sonographique de Monaco, um, which is very much in line with what the, the Monagas government is uh, promoting, so protection of the ocean, being uh, eco-responsible, um, so our students have the opportunity also to, to participate in these kind of challenges. We organize business conferences usually once a month on different topics. So top CEOs, top managers who come in and give uh, speeches about the next financial trends uh, or what is the next economic outlook, for example, what are the new skills and demands, these type of topics. Just to give an idea of what we do on a master level, so if you decide to continue with us, of course, we top up a bit what we do with our master students. We have a dedicated a career coach for from the industry, and usually they are headhunters, so they prepare the students um, to enter their industry specifically. Okay, so for the sports management, you have someone who is fully dedicated to sports because a CV for the sports industry will not quite be the same one as the one for finance, for example, and same goes for luxury. We do a profile book, which is a small profile of all the students in the class. That's something that we use actually to promote our students to the companies that we work with. We have business consulting projects, so real projects on which our students work for companies. Uh, they act as consultants. So that's the first thing also to put on a CV. We have a course on networking techniques that we, then we apply with the networking cocktail that we organize every year. So this is just to give you a big, a big picture of what is the type of services that we provide. If we move on then to go and see uh, the International Business Days. So that's an event that we organize every year. This year it will take place from the 23rd to the 25th of March. I need to change that picture. And we organize over three days uh, industry focused conferences, practical workshops, uh, speed beast dating sessions, so short 10 minutes interviews with companies, on campus recruitment sessions with companies who are coming to recruit for interns. Uh, last year we had 70, um, 68 companies attending. Uh, this year the idea is to hold the event partially virtually, of course, we'll do with the, the COVID restrictions, uh, but we'll probably still have, God forbid, uh, some, uh, some sessions on campus. To give you an idea of who are the brands who participated last year, for example, 
if we move on to the next slide, uh, you'll see many different logos. So if, for example, Louis Vuitton coming every year since six years uh, to hold on-campus recruitment sessions, Fraser within uh, the yachting industry, you see Adidas for sports, uh, Edmond de Rothschild in finance, for example. This, I'm just naming a few, there's so many, I'm not gonna name them all, but this is to give you an idea of who are the type of people come in. For example, we had someone from LinkedIn who gave a, a workshop on how to ace your LinkedIn profile. So these are the type of things that we do with these companies uh, and we're in close contact with them throughout the year. Uh, in terms of internships, because you have to do one at some point, usually most of our students find an internship in Monaco, 61%. Uh, of them secure an internship in Monaco. Now this year with COVID, it is still true. It's a tiny bit less. I would say it's 55% rather than 61, but we're still managing to place our students in Monaco, except of course, in some industries such as events, uh, hospitality, um, which are two of the industries which are not doing so great at the moment, they're closed. So for obvious reasons, uh, our students are rather going into marketing, digital marketing a lot, finance, of course, uh, head hunting, uh, yachting. Uh, those are the type of industries that they're integrating in Monaco. So you'll see that the industries in which our students go, luxury, finance, event management, professional services and sports are very much in line with the specialization that you get uh, to choose uh, in your last year of your bachelor degree and in line with our master uh, the, the masters that we propose at IUM as well. In terms of employers, very similar to the ones from the business days, because of course the ones who come to the business days come then to uh, become the recruiters of our students. So you see a lot of, uh, of names, uh, once again, Julius Barr Finance, uh, Monaco Mediax in event management, Elkin Workers, which is doing real estate and yachting as well, Bluebell, located in South Korea. We have a partnership with an Asian track on the master in luxury uh, type of level, Fairmont, which is hospitality, Cartier, jewelry. Once again, I'm not going to go through all of them, but quite a few names, okay? Then the famous question, you know, to work or to study, the one that I was talking about to you earlier and that my students usually come to me during their third year. Just to give you an idea, in 2019, we had 124 bachelor students who graduated and became alumni. More or less about 80 of them continue with the master degree, okay? Uh, most of them stayed at IUM uh, in luxury, finance, international management, sport management. And then the others went to other universities such as, for example, UC Bocconi, Halt, Louis, Neoma, just to name a few, okay? It makes sense to do a master degree, uh, especially now, um, but it makes even more sense when you're targeting specific positions, uh, for example, in finance. You see that uh, a lot of my students are struggling, for example, on the bachelor level to find internships in finance because most of the time what is it required even to do an internship is a master degree. Same goes with uh, luxury, depending on the type of position that you want to achieve, you'll need a master degree to be able uh, to um to target some uh, specific uh, positions okay um to give you the other side uh the ones who decided to work so out of 44 students who decided to continue with their professional career and to stop studying 37 of them found a job at graduation so the moment we physically gave the diploma meaning 84 percent so it's really really a good placement rate um, that you can uh, that you can see. 25 of them stayed in Monaco. So that is actually quite interesting because Monaco has a very protectionist work environment, meaning that uh, they have a priority system and depending if you're Monegasque, if you live in Monaco, if you're living in the surroundings of Monaco, you'll be higher uh, in the rankings to get a job in Monaco or not, okay? In terms of salary, you can expect about 25K if you just uh, go and work with the bachelor degree. What is interesting to know is also that we promote entrepreneurship and we uh, encourage our students also to become entrepreneurs. And 
in 2019, 7% uh, of our alumni in the bachelor decided to uh, build their own, um, their own career. Um, before I move on, yes, thank you. Uh, so in terms of positions, location, so posi location, we said 45% in Monaco. In terms of position, a lot of sales associate, digital marketing, uh, community manager, uh, events, um, planner, coordinator, logistics. These are the type of positions, of course, not limit, non-exhaustive list once again, but these are the type of positions uh, that you can uh, you can think of. Before I move on to the just the alumni part, I have a question for Alain. Alain, you, you, you attended last year, for example, the business days. Uh, could you give your feedback on that event and maybe tell them the, the type of work that we do together um, when we meet to review CV, cover letter, what are your impressions? Yeah, so last year was the first time that I attended the International Business Days. And uh, I thought it was a great opportunity because there were so many professionals that came into the IUM, which you could meet very easily. Um, you could communicate quite easily with them. And they gave very different um, presentations. So. A lot of them gave presentations about their company and about the opportunities that they have in terms of recruiting students and other professionals gave presentations uh, and masterclasses about different topics. For example, um, like you mentioned, uh, someone came in from LinkedIn. She gave a complete masterclass on how to make the perfect LinkedIn profile, etc. We had someone come in who was a uh, headhunter, I think executive uh, searcher executive recruiter uh, and in based in Monaco and she gave a lot of information about uh, employability trends in uh, Monaco and the best way to get the internship there and so that was really cool and also of course the speed dating sessions with the businesses so you had the chance to meet with the businesses and had a one-on-one -on -one talk to introduce yourself give your CV make yourself known. And uh, overall, I thought it was a really great experience and I'm looking forward to next year event. Thank you, Alain. From the 23rd, 23rd to the 25th of March uh, for the next one. So just quickly to wrap up, we have 3,300 alumni spread all around the world. Actually, it's 3,500. Uh, we just had the 200 more uh, back in uh, December. Um, most of them located in Western Europe, 25% um, of them in Monaco. Um, once you become an alumni, you are invited to uh, a platform, a dedicated platform. You stay in touch with us for life. You keep your email address. You get invited to exclusive alumni events. You get invited to all the conferences, all the events that we organized here. So you never get rid of us basically we'll always be in touch IUM is a big family if you have questions uh, doubts about uh, the program you can get in touch even with, with any of our alumni they're very much um, uh, approachable and they're always super happy to share their experience so you can also uh, connect with them on LinkedIn and uh, or you can connect with Alain after the presentation they're all super supportive and super happy uh, to share Thank you. Thank you, Marine. And so now it's uh, my part. So about the application process, the selection criteria, and also the tuition fees. So um, to apply, it's really easy. You just need to go on our website, so monaco.edu, and you have a red button, uh, apply online. So you just click on that button, and then you will have to follow all the steps. So the first one is to download several documents, such as your ID, also uh, your, your picture, and your more recent grades, your transcripts. After that, you need to pay the application fees, 50 euros, and then we will organize for you interviews. There are two types, two kinds of interviews. So we have the motivational interview, and we also have uh, the English interview. Of course, for those who have studied more than three years in English, or for those who are native, or for those who already have uh, an English test proficiency, 
such as the, the IELTS or the TOEFL or the Cambridge, you don't need to do this English interview. For the others, you need to do this interview too. Uh, all the interviews are online. It's uh, via Teams, so it's really easy. And uh, you, I will assist you, of course, during the whole process. Now, what is important is to understand uh, which candidates we're looking for who we want to have here at IOM. So of course, we are looking for someone who is uh, able to follow the courses, so at the academic level, but we also uh, need to know you, to know who you are, what is uh, your background, of course, but not only academic. So if you have extracurricular activities, for instance, and also if you have professional projects. So if you already have a professional project, we, we need to know that and to understand why you want to study here at IOM. Uh, basically, we need to, to see who we have uh, in front of us and to we are seeking for the unique candidates. So to give you an idea. And uh, now I would like to talk, to talk about the tuition fees because it's a recurrent question. So it's uh, an average of 12,000 euros per year and uh, you have three years in your bachelor degree. So this is for the tuition fees part. So Marine, uh, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Because now uh, it's time for, for the questions. And uh, I have a question for you. So uh, are all the internships and the jobs in English? Uh, no, it depends <laughs> where they're located. So uh, the, the internships that we propose um, are to help our students, but they're not a limitation. Of course, it is a job to find a job. It is a job to find an internship. So we propose help, but the idea is that you also go and look on your own, meaning that you will be able to do your internship anywhere in the world. Uh, you don't have to limit yourself to Monaco. Most of our students do their internship in Monaco because they like the idea of staying in Monaco because it makes sense in regards to what they want to do and the industries that are available in Monaco, which are um, finance, yachting, uh, events, uh, hospitality, and real estate okay those are the main industries that you will find in monaco you can find also internships in retail um, but if you're targeting for example uh, luxury uh, fashion monaco is not the right place to target as well as for cosmetics and etc okay so of course the language will depend um on where you you do your internship basically now in monaco a few companies do propose english speaking internships uh but don't base your search on just that okay thank you marine so uh now it's time for your questions so I can see that we have questions about uh, the interview. So it's online, it's 30 minutes. Uh, for the motivational interview, uh, it's, uh, it's 30 minutes and it can be with the program director or when, with one of our professors. And uh, I see that Kay wants to apply for September 2022. So it will be possible to begin your application next September since all the applications are open one year before. So now for the September 2021 intake, uh, it's the, the right moment to apply actually. And we already have a lot of candidates. Do you have other questions? Okay, so we have a question about the accommodation. Uh, so it's uh, really, we have a slide for you to explain a little bit the area. So it's really easy to commute actually. So you can live in Monaco, but it's really expensive to live here. You can also live in the surrounding. So Beausoleil, Cap d'Ai, you can come to the university by walk, by foot. Uh, otherwise you can live also in Nice or in Monton. Uh, because it's really easy to commute since we have the train station and we're located very, very near from the, the train station. Maybe, Alain, you can talk about your, your own experience. Where do you live and uh, how do you get to IOM? Ooh. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so um, initi initially, I found my first apartment uh, in Nice through the housing platform, Studapart. 
which I found, uh, yeah, which was really easy for me because there were so many listings um, through there and um, I moved to Nice. And then after being student at IUM for a while, like you hear like a lot of places, right? Uh, you find a lot of places you hear in the community. So then by word, I uh, found this other place, quite nice place in Kabdai. And um, yeah, so I moved there. And I think there's both pros and cons of living um, around Monaco and also a little bit outside Monaco, for example, in Nice or Menton. I think like if you live very near Monaco, you tend to stay quite a lot in Monaco because basically you have um, everything you want, you have it there. And there's no really like a need to go outside. So sometimes you get a little bit um, like a bit like stuck in the bubble because it's so comfortable, you don't really uh, move out. However, if you live in Nice, for example, you're in the big city and like there's so many things to do. You meet uh, a lot of other people, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so that um, it's easy. You can just walk, but if you live outside the area, you can easily take the train or bus because the public transport is very good. Not so many delays. Unlike uh, other uh, French cities where I lived uh, before, a little late, so it's that's quite good here. And if you live close in surroundings, you can uh, walk or as well take the Monaco uh, public transport with buses inside. Or, by the way, well, I'm I'm Dutch, so maybe I'm a bit biased, but uh, in Monaco you have the Mona bikes, the electric bikes. They're <laughs> superb, really. Yeah, uh, ten euros. I, I'm not sure how much it is. Maybe like ten or twenty euros a year. You have like unlimited. Um, Maybe it's a little bit more, but around this price range, you can take the bikes everywhere. You got stations and uh, yeah, but for finding housing, it's uh, quite easy and there's quite a lot of offers. And um, so don't worry. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Alain. And yes, you can see now on the screen that uh, we propose several solutions. So there is to the part, Alain told about that. It's a platform and uh, you are in contact with landlords directly. This part is uh, managed by the student services. The student services will help you with the housings and uh, also with the uh, visas and insurance. So I will write in the chat the email address and uh, you can send them an email with uh, they will answer all your, your questions. So uh, through the part, we also have a Facebook group. So you need, you can meet your, your future uh, mates and uh, you can find an apartment there too. Uh, and also we work with uh, real estate agencies. So you can have um, opportunities also through these, uh, these, uh, agent these agencies. Do we have other questions? Oh, yeah, and also living expenses uh, chart, sorry. So you can see, to have an idea, uh, you can see the, the prices of uh, an apartment, so in Beausoleil and Cap and also in Nice, which is less expensive, and in Monaco, the more expensive uh, location. Also, to, to just uh, have an idea, you can see uh, how much per month you will need to, to pay for uh, a cell phone for your transportation card, uh, food, uh, and so on, just to, to give you an idea. So I can see that we have new questions. Uh, so that's Anna. Practical question. I like to know when our schedules will be given to us for the integration day. So Tatiana, uh, don't worry about that. You will receive this this afternoon or tomorrow because Tatiana uh, will join us uh, next week actually for the spring intake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't worry about that. You will have uh, an answer today or tomorrow. Practical question, perfect. And um, duk, duk, duk. we have also a question in the, in the chat. I think it's for Marine regarding the career possibilities after graduating. So my goal is to work in fashion journalism, and I was wondering if I went, would be a great path for me to follow if I want to work in this part of fashion industry. Marine? Uh, I think, um, so IEM will give you the, the right knowledge about the fashion industry and everything there is to know on uh, that industry. Um, I'm not so sure it will prepare you to the journalism part uh, of it, okay? 
Um, but it can be a great way to combine uh, both, uh, starting with uh, studying uh, luxury at IUM and then maybe following with some extra additional on the site courses about writing uh, in journalism. What do you think, Patrice? Yes, I agree. Uh, maybe uh, you, you will specialize afterwards. It's possible, you know, to, to, to switch to a master afterwards. Uh, maybe the, the general knowledge of the, uh, of the luxury industry first, the industry, the, the sectorial knowledge um, will help you maybe understanding a bit more how it works and the code, which, which are very important in this sector. And then afterwards, you can specialize a bit. Or you could do digital marketing in the luxury. This is something we have as well. Uh, and that will bring you more to digital you know, communication industry, uh, but through the luxury sector. OK, thank you. I don't see other questions. If you have questions, it's the, the right time. OK. So no, no other questions for today. Thank you very much for attending the, this webinar. I hope you enjoyed the, the presentation. And uh, of course, uh, we are here. Yes, we are here to answer all the questions you may have. So don't hesitate uh, to contact us. I will now put you um, in the chat all the email addresses you, you need to have. So don't hesitate. Thank you again for, for doing this uh, this meeting today and uh, so we have we have uh, alessandra that is asking if we can have a private session in italian yeah of course <laughs> yeah, we speak italian as well here uh, the, all the classes are in english huh? here this is maybe something i completely missed to mention but uh, yes of course classes are in english and but uh, we are you know very close to italy so most of us speaks italian and uh, we are very happy to welcome parents so it can be online it can be physically do not hesitate. Uh, yes, so sir. just take an appointment through Laure and uh, with me or with her, no problem. We are, we are available for that kind of thing, no problem. Exactly. If you want to have a tour of the, of the university, it's possible. You, you just send me an email or call the university and we can uh, organize that. With, uh, with pleasure. It would be our pleasure to, to welcome you here at IUM. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone. Have a nice afternoon and talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. bye. bye.